Hello and welcome! Today we're in the new tier 8 US battleship, the Constellation. She is available for 12,800 doubloons and the ship was given to me by Wargaming. She is the newest American battleship added to the game. What does she remind you of? To me, she looks a lot like the Colorado and the Kansas, right? Sorry, I mean the Kansas. She is kind of wide and uh, pretty tall and not that long. You know, the uh, the dreadnought style American battleships. So you would expect that uh, she plays just like them, right? That the constellation would be just another mega dreadnought with some all right-ish stats, and, but she'd may mostly just be really slow and all of that stuff, right? That's what you'd expect. But you'd be wrong. This ship is the most bizarre ship I have probably ever played. She might look like the Colorado and the Kansas, but the Constellation is one of the fastest battleships in the game. Faster than in Iowa. I mean, look at it. I was going 35 knots in her. Yeah, 35 knots. And she doesn't have a speed boost or anything. That's just the speed flag and uh, yeah. Her base speed is 33.3 knots, and then you add the flag on top of that. She also has a radar. A 10 kilometer radar that lasts for 30 seconds. Yeah, this is a radar that's larger than Missouri's radar. And she also has 12.2 kilometer concealment range. This means that she can use her radar better than the Missouri can. Lower concealment and longer range. Oh, I'm spotted. So let's use this radar right here. Hello, Maka. How are you doing there? But wait, there's more. This ship also has 9.2 kilometer range torpedoes. <laughs> yep, she basically has it all. Oh, and she actually also has great anti-air. The guns are basically Colorado guns. They have Slightly better dispersion, but slightly worse Sigma. The penetration and all of that stuff is the same as the Colorado's. And Colorado guns aren't really anything to scoff at. They are absolutely capable of citadeling cruisers like the Yoshino. As I was saying... <laughs> well, there goes most of the Yoshino's HP, just like that. And because the ship is so fast, we can just disengage now. But obviously these major advantages don't come for free, right? Because remember, this is still a tier 8 battleship. So some of the downsides that the ship has is mostly related to her tankiness. See, she only has 4 heals. Regular battleships tend to have 5 heals. On top of that, her armor is a lot weaker than you would expect from battleships. Her bow and stern are 27 millimeters, which means that uh, ships like the North Carolina, etc. will be able to overmatch her bow and stern. On top of that, her main belt is more like a heavy cruiser's. It's something like 200, 210 millimeters thick only, which means that uh, lots of ships, even many cruisers, will be able to penetrate through her main belt. However, her citadel is decently hard to hit because it sits on the waterline, which means that you'd have to arc your shells downwards, which isn't that easy to do. Therefore, mostly what you're worried about is regular penetrating hits. Her deck and side armor is 57mm though, which means that lots of shells will end up ricocheting off of that. And despite her pretty sizable torpedo belt, it's actually only, I think, like 20% or something. Nothing... Not nearly as much as you would expect based on the look of the ship. So ultimately, a pretty weird ship. I definitely didn't expect her to be what she is based on her looks, right? Absolutely didn't expect that. The radar was a surprise the first time I played her. The speed was a surprise. The torpedoes were a surprise. It's uh, pretty interesting, and honestly, a lot of these things are really good to have. And I think Constellation, as a result of it, is a strong ship. 
She isn't a mainline tank like a Kansas or a North Carolina would be, but she brings utility. I mean, 10 kilometer radar is basically always nice to have. On top of that, the battleship with torpedoes means that uh, other battleships have to shy away from her at close range. And her speed means that playing her doesn't feel boring like many of the other dreadnought-looking battleships. Note that I said dreadnought-looking battleships, because the constellation is not a dreadnought. She is actually a battlecruiser. In fact, her sister ship ended up becoming Lexington, the aircraft carrier. Also, if you're wondering why do I have a maple leaf camo on my American battlecruiser, that's because I played this match yesterday, and yesterday was Canada Day. So I figured I'd pull down America's hat. So, the Izumo and friends took care of the Gustav Julius Merka on the enemy team over there, and the Yoshino is leaving. In front of me are a Yamato and an Amagi. I have torpedoes. They don't have torpedoes. So, we're just gonna go next to them and then torpedo them. I do have a 27mm bow, which means that they could potentially do pretty heavy penetrating hits against me. Both of them, actually. And showing broadside would also probably end up going pretty poorly for me. However, my hope is that Yamato's third traverse is slow, and that maybe Yamagi isn't also paying attention immediately as I come around the island. I launch a scout plane, so I can actually see how they're positioned around the island, although I suppose it doesn't make too much difference. I'm already committed to going over there. Oh, Yamato's actually low. Maybe we can just finish her off. In fact, she's losing HP, probably on fire or flooding. Flooding. So the goal is for me to try to angle in a way where they don't hit my bow, where they shoot my main belt and then ricochet off of that. Sadly, the rear turret firing angles at close range are actually not that good on the ship. But I suppose we'll manage. Yamato actually hit our main belt, so we were fine. I'm gonna leave my tarp slightly more on the Yamagi because I think she'll accelerate and probably turn in a little bit. Meanwhile, her turrets are still turning, so we get a few more free shots. It's difficult to sit at Lenamangi at this range, so we're mostly just going for penetrating hits. And we landed all three torpedoes, and the flooding finished her off. Now we're gonna... Well, I would have liked to not hit the Yamagi's uh, sinking corpse, but I suppose there's not much we can do about that one anymore. So, this was a pretty successful fight on this side of the map. I helped secure the cap by going with the destroyer because of my speed. My radar helped take care of the uh, Gustav Julius Maka, the enemy destroyer. My torpedoes helped me take care of the Amagi. And uh, yeah, this is... I basically got to use all of my shiny toys to uh, help my team over here. Now it's a 7 versus 5, so... We're in a pretty commanding lead, although it does appear that we're gonna be behind in cap zones. Sadly, the only ship left by the enemy team on this side of the map is a Petropavlovsk, and that's not really a ship I would like to fight. If I show even a little bit too much broadside, that thing can absolutely devastate me. I think it'll be unlikely that she hits my citadel, because the citadel is basically flush with the waterline, however, she can most definitely do pretty heavy penetrating hits with AP, if I show almost any kind of side. And this is why I don't want to fight the Petra, especially because I'm unlikely to deal much damage in return to her. It's really difficult to sink a Petra Pavlovsk. You kind of need multiple ships to be at close range, or torpedoes, or something along those lines. AP is not very effective against a ship like that. Neither are fires, actually, because... She's a regular cruiser. But I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I think we can just... I'd like to say we can avoid fighting her, but... Looking at the ships that are around me... No, I think I actually have to go fight that Petra Pavlovsk. Because, look, you don't want to have a Des Moines fight the Petra. Because the Des Moines is gonna get dumpstered eventually. You don't want to have a Hipper fight the Petra, because, well... 
Even if the Petra wasn't super strong, it would be a tier 8 cruiser against a tier 10 cruiser. So, other than the Izumo, I'd be the only one left here to try to fight this Petra, which is exactly what I guess I'm gonna do. Oh, a broadside Petra Pavlovsk! We're gonna do basically nothing at all because it's a Petra Pavlovsk. Yeah, even if I had aimed lower, well, maybe she just turns away and then the shells don't hit or something like that. That ship has next to no freeboard. Ooh, the Plymouth on the other side actually took out the Tippets. I suppose that's good. Hopefully Erste Jutland also gets something. <sighs> Fighting Petra is gonna be bad. But I suppose as long as I can scare him off, then I can end up turning around later and kite away from it. Petra is firing at me. Luckily I'm angled enough. It shouldn't be a big deal. Well, 5k damage, but not the worst. I should probably stop soon. Because I don't, really don't want to keep chasing that Petra. I think eventually the Petra would win this fight. So it's better for me to start go running away from her. But I need to get her to be close to my concealment range so I can actually disengage. The ship is on fire. Okay, torpedoes, that's fine. Yep, we have outrun the torpedoes. This is why being a fast ship is good. And now I guess we can just safely stop. And hello Fletcher. You're the one that shot those torpedoes at me, aren't you? Would you like some... Solved, Wait, sir. I think I derped here. <laughs> Des Moines used radar at the same time as I did. In fact, she actually used radar slightly earlier than I did, so... My radar is actually completely wasted. Dang it. But it's okay, we got the Fletcher anyway. But now, since I had stopped, the Petra Pavlovsk had actually sailed out of my concealment range. Which means that unless I get set on fire, I'm gonna fall into concealment and get away safely here. Oh come on, she got to fire once more. Please don't set me on fire. Oh come on! What the hell? The ship is on fire. How can you be this lucky in a Petra Pavlovsk? Okay, you already have all the advantages you'd ever need, and then you get super lucky too? What? BS. And now you just saw why you don't show broadside to a Petra Pavlovsk or any kind of angle to a Petra, because she just dumpsters you with AP while being unable to take... while you're unable to deal any significant damage in return. The only winning move against the Petra Pavlovsk is... Well, I'd like to say not to fight, but honestly a CV is actually pretty effective against them too. Oh god, now a shot from across the map by the Alsace, but luckily we're fine. And now we'll just probably kite away, because I am pretty low, only 10k HP. Izum was slowly joining the fight again. Right now I don't have to run away, but as long as we keep control of the B cap for some significant amount of time, we should win this match. Because obviously we're at, at a significant points lead at this point. So even if they get B, we have some leeway. But again, Hipper and the Mine are not good ships to fight the Petra. Well, battleships aren't good ships to fight the Petra either. But mostly we'll have to defend against the Kitakas and maybe the Alsace. Okay, I'm spotted. That's kind of bad news. Because it means Kitakas is close. Oh god, I'm showing broadside to the Alsace. No! I thought the Alsace was actually more to the south at the sea cap. That's. Yeah, I really thought she was like over there. Because that's where I thought last the last shells came from. But this really caught me off guard. Still, I'm gonna leave her with a present of torpedoes. And we're just gonna put an island between me and the Alsace. Hopefully. I do want to stay close enough to be able to radar the B-Cap, because obviously Kitakaza is going to show up soon. But I do want to be far away enough that if necessary I can just run away without actually going down. Still have one final heal, but it won't get me to too high HP still. 
Hmm, can I fire over this island? Because that Alsace is showing broadside. Let's try on this low bit here. Well, some shells went over. But sadly, the Alsace had already reacted. I'm going to use my final heal. Four minutes to go. We do win in two minutes, though, but... I think it won't come to that, because I think... Yep, Kidakaza has entered the beat cap. Are you gonna radar Des Moines? No? Well, maybe I should then. Hello, Kitakaze. Hipper and Izuma should be able to shoot her now, but wow, that Kitakaze has so much HP. Damn. That's gonna be rough, and I don't want to angle, because... Or, or I don't want to show all of my guns. Maybe one shot I can do, but after that, I don't think I can fire more. Because I'll be showing side to Alsace. Even this one might have been a mistake. But I suppose three hits on the Kitakaze are worth. Petra is also coming around. I'm gonna launch Torps here. In case the Alsace decides to come around this way. Okay, her secondaries. Oh, she's actually not coming this way, it seems. I guess she's gonna head more towards the cap zone. Which is fine. We have a 270 point lead. So I think um, the enemy probably can't win just by getting the caps. They'd have to sink a few of our ships, which is why I'm going to open up more distance between me and the enemy. Because I would definitely be an option for them to sink. I only have 17k HP and this ship is not the tankiest. Alsace is showing side. I doubt I can punish her. Oh, Izumo actually went down. Okay. Maybe we can take out the Alsace, but it would be a bit of a risky gamble, I think. Okay, yeah, I only have 6k HP. I'm just gonna leave. I am out of here and maybe take some long range shots later, if necessary. Hmm, yeah, I guess firing on the destroyer does still make sense. It's a bit risky, though. I'm probably only gonna, only gonna do this one shot. Well, we still landed two shots, so... That's another minus 10% HP to the Kitakaze. And hopefully Des Moines can finish her. Although, I guess Petro is, will be busy with the Des Moines so far. So maybe I can just take another shot just in case. Let's just fire. Yep. And we continue running. Oh, okay. The mine was able to finish her off. Well done. Well done. And now we just leave. Because we just win by points. I think. Right? Because even if the Des Moines and the Hipper go down. Eh, that would still be a questionable points lead. I'm not sure if that would be enough. Oh god. I'm down to... Less than 2k HP. Okay, okay. We definitely aren't gonna fire. Wait, where are those torpedoes? Where did they come from? How long have they been there? Okay, we need... I, I think we need both of the cruise. Sorry, we need one of the cruisers to survive. We definitely can't survive losing two ships, but the mine is probably safe already. She's behind the island and... Well, the enemy only has 20 seconds. Hipper really should not be firing. Oh, wow. She actually went down. She really should have not been firing there. 15 seconds? I mean, if I don't fire, I'm never gonna be spotted. And the mine also looks to be safe. That's how it's done. Pretty good game, I have to say. Pretty good game. And I'd say pretty much no other tier 8 battleship would have been able to do what the Constellation was able to do in this match, right? Other tier 8 battleships don't have radar, they don't have torpedoes. 146k damage, Confederate, Dreadnought, 27 secondary hits, even assisted a base cap, 2351 base XP, the mine deserves a compliment for surviving at the end. Does Hipper deserve a compliment though? Because she really shouldn't have kept firing at the end. So I'll give her I'll give her a good manners.
Plymouth also deserves a compliment at the end there, where she was able to take out one of the battleships at the end, and obviously the enemy Kitakaza and Petra deserve compliments. 2.1 million potential damage, 108k damage taken, mostly arm. Yeah, look, five fires, but they only did 8,000 damage. So let's take a look at the constellation in port. This is an additional perma camo, I think, that you can purchase for 5,000 doubloons. I think. I don't think this comes with the ship itself. At least I don't have it. It looks amazing though. Like, seriously, this looks really good. See, it's 5,000 doubloons. This is what the ship looks normally like though. Like, no, not like that. Like this. Pretty American battleship-ish, I think. A little different though. I suppose it's because it's just so much taller than most of the other ships. Anyway, commander skills that I used in this match. It's a standard battleship loadout. For survivability, emergency repair specialist, grease the gears, adrenaline rush, emergency repair expert, concealment expert, basics of survivability, and fire prevention expert. As upgrades, it's also pretty standard there. Concealment, then I use propulsion mod, although maybe you could consider damage control, but I really like propulsion mod. It really catches people off guard, especially on a big battleship like this one. Then I use the range upgrade, because the American battleships can't equip dispersion into this slot, so it'll be a range. And it's kinda necessary, with it you get 20.2 km range, which is completely fine at tier, t tier 8. However, without it, you actually end up at something like, um, I think 17.4? Yeah, 17.4. Which I think is a little too little, okay? You'd like to have slightly more at tier 8. In a tier 6 to 8 game, it's probably not that big of a deal, but tier 10 match, it can be a problem. Second slot, obviously radar, because it makes the radar last 36 seconds instead of 30 seconds. But if you don't have it, then I'd use damage control. Main arts modification 1 in the first slot, because, you know, you don't want your main guns knocked out basically ever. And this helps you. It also helps your torpedo tubes from not being knocked out, by the way. Which is a problem on some battleships with torpedoes. Although I haven't really found it to be an issue on this ship. I think it's mostly because of uh, the fact that the torpedo tubes are at the very back, right? On something like the Pomand, the torp tubes are like in the middle of the ship. Which means that if any anything shoots you at the middle of the ship, it's likely to knock out your torp tubes. Whereas on this ship, at the end, well, people don't really aim for this part of the ship. As I said, 27mm bound, not 32. So battleships like, well, basically any tier 8 battleship will be able to overmatch it. Not Bismarck though, and not something like a Bourgogne, but most of the things will overmatch it. But 57mm deck armor and sight plate armor. And there's also a 32mm torpedo belt, which means that everything except Yamato is basically gonna ricochet off of this. And uh, behind that you have basically like a regular casemate armor, which is 178 millimeters. Not all that thick. The Citadel actually sits on the very water line, and it utilizes a somewhat similar armor scheme that the uh, Mega Dreadnoughts, the Kansas, etc. have, right? Where the uh, casemate armor is wider on top. Which means that if you actually want to hit the Citadel, you have to go through this casemate armor plate here. And then arc downwards. Citadel deck is 51mm, which means that you're not gonna overmatch this one. And the side is 38 also not gonna overmatch it. So yeah, armor-wise, for regular penetrations, this thing eats them like crazy. But Citadel hits doesn't really happen all that much. So yeah. I find the ship to be fun. It's When I saw the ship the first time, I really didn't expect what she actually ended up being. And I really like what she ended up being. The radar is just super useful. And maybe, maybe, maybe we can get a certain other radar battleship back one day. If uh, we are allowed to keep radar battleships like this one. 
So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.